Hey guys, welcome back to Web Squadron. We're gonna show you how to add some images to your Elementor website. And when you hover over the images, a frame and an icon that might be a link to another page or a pop-up or something appears. It's dead, dead simple to do. And I just wanna give you a few tips on how to do that right now. This is simpler than you think, actually. I'm just gonna add in a, a section with three columns. Uh, just because that's what I want to do. Let's give it 100 there just so it's spaced out. And I'm not too bothered about the width or anything. So I'm just showing you how this can work. And you can put it in a full width or a box width or something like that. Now, in these images, there will be um, some text. And it's quite common when we're adding text to an image. What we'll do is we'll put the image into the column. The trouble is then, you then have to size the column. Like in terms of padding or margin or things like that. You might even add a spacer. Because when you add an image to a column, it doesn't fill up until you add a bit of spacing in and then the image will expand. You know, when you add a column or a section background, that's fine for desktop. But when you start moving into like tablet and mobile, you're, you're giving yourself extra work because now you've got to modify all the settings again. What I'm going to show you is how we do it with images and text all in one place. So we're going to drop a image into column one. And I'm going to pick this image over here of a polar bear. Just some fantasy images I have managed to get off from Canva. Now this image is a 500 by 500 pixel, you know, web piece, style it the right, not style it, scale it to the right size that you want to have it. I'm just going to go into here and I'm going to actually style this to be a pixel of, we will go with 300 by 300, like that, okay? And that's what we'll have for every other image on here as well. In fact, I better, I better tell you, I'm going to just re re go rewind a little bit and just say, when you do this, do make sure you've got a box width. If you do full width, it totally starts to mess around with how you're doing things. And if you've got a boxed width and you are now in control of the size of your column, when you come to duplicate, things will look how they should, okay? So what we're going to do now is, so we've got a column with an image, okay? And we're now going to add in a header. When you add the header, it goes to the bottom. We're just going to say uh, header text. Like that, we'll put it in the center. I'm gonna make this have a dark black uh, background for the uh, for the text, like that. I'm gonna make it a little bit transparent, just something like that. I mean, I'd admit you're going, what are you doing transparent for? It's turning into gray. Don't worry, you'll understand in a moment. And then I'm gonna go to the style of this, make this a white uh, font. And I'm just gonna make the typography, we'll leave it as a bottom. We'll just go with two, oh, sorry, R-E-M. We'll go with two. Uh, yeah, two's fine. Two's fine. And we'll go with a weighting of about 300. No, 300's too small. We'll go with 400. There we go. And we'll now... No, we won't update. Then I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to go to positioning and I'm going to make this be custom. And as soon as we do that, the text will now be uh, centered because remember the column was centered when we did the positioning, but we now have the text with a with a transparent background, but it's a little bit too tight. So I'm just going to go to there, the advanced tab, and I'm just going to give a bit of padding. Uh, I think we'll go with about five on the left and about five on the right. Yeah, I think we could do with a bit on the bottom as well, couldn't we? Two? Mm, no, one. Yeah, there you go. That'll do fine. Now, that text at the moment is below the image because we have separate um, elements in play here. On the heading, okay, we're not going to use the... Uh, position here where you do absolute or fixed because that will mess around when you start to have responsive sizing. Instead, we're just going to go to advance and it's plain simple really. We're just going to do like, um, just use your margin really. So I'm going to position this to be roughly about there. It doesn't have to be dead center just as long as it is somewhere on the screen. Right. Okay, cool. With me so far, we're then going to add in a icon. Okay. And I'm going to drop the icon over here. And I'm going to go for arrow to the right. We'll go with that one. And, and please, you know, you can use whatever you want. S stay with me on this. We're getting to the juicy stuff in the moment. I'm going to insert that. And you would put in a link that will take them to another page or wherever you want to go. You hit the dynamic tags if you want it to open a pop-up, like a menu or something about a product or services or pricing or anything like that. We'll go to style, we'll make this be white. I could make this be a full-on transparent, but I won't at the moment. Oh, sorry, I dropped it above the heading. There we go. I put it back below the heading. That's why the heading text moved down for a moment. 
Now the icon is over here. In fact, we don't even really need to do the positioning on this. So in a way for the header, we could have left that out and just done the margin. So I'm gonna leave it for the header for now. But for the icon, uh, we're just gonna to go to advanced and I'm just going to take it to the top, like so. Do, 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 do. Hurry up, hurry up, faster, faster, faster. There we go, we'll do something like that and it's probably gonna be a hyperlink. Right, now let's get the frame in, okay? So we're gonna get another image and I'm gonna drop that to be here. Just make sure it's dropped below the header or the icon. It doesn't matter really, just make sure it's dropped somewhere. Okay, um, I'm then gonna go over here and I'm gonna pick a transparent image. Okay, this was made in Canva with a square outline with a transparent background. That's all it is. You know, there's nothing majorly scientific going on here. That is where it is. We're just gonna go to full, go to style, make sure its size is equal to the image above, 300 by 300. Even though it's the same size, it's actually inward a little bit. So we get a bit of a frame, not full on outline, but a little bit inwards. Right, let's now just get that image and I'm gonna go with a minus. There we go, and I think let's go with minus 530. That's way too much, but 330. Right, there you go. It was always gonna be roughly 300. And we'll just get that to be 320. There we go. So it was 10 in all the way around. So that's why you got 320, okay? Uh, minus 320, sorry, in terms of sizing. Right, now we've got that in. Now let's make them appear when you hover. For the um, outline, I'm gonna give it a CSS class of show hover. This is really important. I'm now gonna to go to the icon. I'm actually gonna give the icon a Z index of uh, two. So it, it is definitely ahead of everything else on the page. And I'm gonna give it a show hover as well. So the icon and the frame is a show hover. Straight away, can you see they've disappeared? They've already disappeared. So if the header had show hover, it would disappear. If I had a social sharing icon, it would disappear. If I had another image within there of something else, it would disappear. Even a pricing table, it would disappear. Why did they disappear? So this code is saying anything that is called show hover in the class, opacity zero. When you hover over the column, opacity one. Now remember, this code sits in the custom CSS for the column not the section or the icon or the image, it's for the column. This is deadly important because when you hover over the column, you then want everything to play. So watch this. You now hover and the icon and the frame appears. I can make it either super speedy with 0.1 seconds so it comes really quick, or I can make it ridiculously slow, two seconds. Whoa, that's too slow, right? So, um, you know, go, go for what works for you in terms of how quick or slow you want it to appear. That is it. And the great thing about that, if I go to tablet, okay, um, of course, you know, you've got to rearrange the sizing and all that because this is um, a tablet width of 768. So you would probably rearrange it so you have column one, two, and three, okay? Just like when you go to the mobile here, it already automatically does column one, two, and three. The sizing is working, okay? So we now go over here. I'm just going to get rid of these columns that I put in as like test ones so I knew where the sizing was. Don't worry about this offsetting you got going on here. Seriously, don't worry. We're gonna duplicate and we are gonna duplicate. I'm gonna go over here to column two and I'm gonna change the image to be that one. And we'll go over to column three, which is this one. And we'll change this image as well. And we'll go for, We'll go with a mammoth image I think I brought in as well. There you go. And, and that's it. So if I now jump to the mobile, look, we have this hover effect going on with buttons appearing. And if I go over here, let's just update. Let's now preview it properly. Okay, look at that. I mean, it's not really, I mean, this is not giving you the finger because I haven't put a real URL in there, but you would have a URL or a button. And you can, I mean, if you think about it, you could have whatever frame you want. I've done a frame, you could have a flowery pattern. You could have an image which is kind of coming off the um, the square even, okay? So this is a dead, dead simple way to do it. The code is in the description. Um, um, I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. And I hope this helps you now just to add a little bit of creativity without using other extra plugins and really simple CSS code. Take care everyone, see you soon.